Hi, let's talk about the 5G coverage calculation in downlink for EMBB services precisely here. We are considering mid-band 3.5 gig. We understood that to calculate the coverage, the first thing we need to talk about is the link budget. That link budget is here to calculate the MAPL, which is the maximum allowed path loss. And it is the maximum path loss that is allowed to have a communication between the UE and the base station. Now, MAPL is basically making of four different components. One is the radiated power from the transmitter end. Second is the margin that is there to have a reliable communication. Third is the receiver sensitivity at the UE end and what kind of array gain we have on the UE end. Now, let's talk about the first part from the transmitter. Let's understand what exactly the effective isotropic radiated power is. From the transmitter, first thing is the radio module we are using. What is the transmit power from the radio module? We are considering 23 dBm here as an example. We are then connecting this radio module with the antenna. Either it could be active antenna or a passive antenna in that case. So we, if we are using the massive MIMO antenna, we will have a higher gain in that case. So we are using 128 different antenna elements in this particular massive MIMO antenna. We are also using the beam forming through this different antenna element and the effective isotropic radiated power by adding up different antenna gains and taking out the losses, we are getting the effective isotropic radiated power as 67 dBm. Next to that is the total margin, which is there to have a reliable communication. We are considering higher margin for the indoor users because we are calculating the cell radius for the indoor users. So here we are considering around 26 dBm as a penetration margin. We are adding up some fading margin also. Then on the receiver end, we are having the effective noise power, which is the combination of thermal noise, which is standard. Then we have the interference density, and then we have how much is the occupied bandwidth and the logarithmic value of that. So we are considering around neg 92 as a receive effective noise power, which we can see in the subsequent slides in detail, the calculation behind it. We are adding up the gains, taking out the margin. We are getting a receive sensitivity of neg 90 in this case. So this is the minimum threshold beyond which uh, the communication between the UE and the base station couldn't happen. We are then adding up certain array gains to calculate finally the MAPL. So the MAPL basis, these three factors which are, which are highlighted in yellow color here are giving a MAPL of 130. Now, if we want to evaluate or if you want to tweak certain input parameters what we can do is say for example we are using uh, antenna elements of not 128 we are using 64 what is going to happen in that case so we'll see that our MAPL has changed from 130 to 127 our cell radius has changed from 500 to 430 and accordingly we'll keep tweaking these different parameters depending upon how we are planning our network so depending upon different areas inputs we are going to change the, these different input parameters and accordingly changing the MAPL and calculating the cell radius. So I'll give you this sheet which is having all the formulas. So you just have to tweak with the inputs here in this case and you can then calculate the overall cell radius. Now the cell radius is basically a function of three key parameters. One is MAPL which we just calculated. Second is a base station height which here we are considering as a 25 meters. Third is a frequency which we are considering 3.5 gig. Now, what if we change the frequency in this case? We want to go for, say, for example, 1.8 gig in that case. How it is going to change? So, in that case, our cell radius in the downlink is changing from 500 to 721 meters. So, if we are going to change the frequency, this is the impact we are going to see in a cell radius in that case, which we have learned about a similar scenario during the spectrum slides. Now, there are different other considerations apart from these different inputs, which we have to take into account while calculating the coverage. One is the cell reliability. We are considering 90% of the cell reliability here. If we are going to increase the cell reliability, what is going to happen? We have to consider more penetration margin in that case. So maybe probably in that case, this figure will go up and accordingly MAPL will go down and the cell radius will further go down. Now the path loss model here we are considering as a non line of sight because we understand there are many obstructions between the UE and the base station. The spectral efficiency we are considering is 5th percentile and also the throughput we are considering at cell edge is also 5th percentile which is equivalent to 5% of the peak data throughput what we are estimating for a particular spectrum we have. These are the different inputs we need to take into account and we will talk about all these different inputs in more detail in the subsequent slides 